Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another ThinkBook to take a look at today from Lenovo. This is their 15P G2 ITH. And the best way to describe this is as an entry-level creative device. It has a 4K display and an NVIDIA GPU. And the price point is a bit lower perhaps than some of the more premium creative devices out there. We're going to dig into this in detail in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now, the price point on this one comes in at around $1,500 as configured. The one we're looking at today has an i7-11800H processor, an NVIDIA GTX 1650 GPU. That GPU is running at 50 watts, and you can get up to a 3050 Ti in some of the other configurations, but all of the GPUs are locked in at 50 watts. This one has 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can upgrade the RAM to 32 gigabytes, and there are two SO DIMM slots inside for DDR4 3200 memory. On this model, it is in single channel mode with one of those modules installed, but because it has the GPU, it won't impact performance as significantly as it would if it did not have uh, separate graphics attached. This has a 512 gigabyte SSD. There are two NVMe slots on board. One of those will support PCIe 4, the other one is PCIe 3, but you do have two NVMe slots inside the case. Now, our review unit came equipped with a 4K display. This is running at 3840 by 2160. It is a 15.6 inch display in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. We are starting to see displays now running at 16 by 10 on many new laptops, which are a little bit taller and maybe better suited for doing document editing and whatnot. But still, it's a very nice looking display. It runs at 600 nits of brightness. And the one that we have is factory calibrated for the X-Rite Pantone standard. And it covers 100% of Adobe RGB. So if you are doing photo editing or something like that, this display will be well suited for it. It is an IPS display. It's got good viewing angles. You've got a lot of range for how the display can be positioned. The hinge feels pretty solid on it. It is a matte display and it is not a touch screen. So you do have to use the trackpad down here, but all in not a bad display here for creative work. It does support HDR, but not Dolby Vision. And it runs at 60 Hertz, which is fine for gaming, but there are gaming laptop displays that run at much faster refresh rates. And there is a 1080p version of this available. What you see here at the top is a webcam, and like many other Lenovo laptops, it has a little shutter that can be put over the lens here to block it. It's only a 720p webcam, though, and it doesn't look all that great, as you can see, even under my studio lights. Uh, so it is something that you might need to pair up with a higher quality webcam if you're doing uh, some production work or something. But for a Zoom call, I think it's going to be fine. There appears to be versions of this configured with a higher quality 1080p camera, but ours came with the 720p. Now the weight on this comes in at 4.19 pounds or 1.9 kilograms. It is a bit on the heavier side, but it's also a larger laptop. It is mostly plastic, although the display lid here is made out of aluminum, which will offer some protection against the back of the screen here. And like all of the other Lenovo ThinkBooks, it's got a very nice keyboard. The keys are well spaced, they're nice and large, it is backlit, you got a good amount of travel to it as well. And this one they managed to fit in a number pad, although the numbers are slightly smaller than the other keys are here. They have a fingerprint reader integrated into the power button. There is no facial recognition on this one, and I found the trackpad to be very accurate and nice to use, a lot like many of the other ThinkBook trackpads that we've looked at. Lenovo has really perfected their keyboard design, and it stays the same from one model year to the next these days, and that's not a bad thing because these are very good keyboards. As far as ports are concerned, you do have a good selection on this one. Your power goes in here, and it comes with a 135 watt power adapter. That's necessary because this has the GPU on board, but you can also power the laptop through the Thunderbolt port over here. 
and that will uh, give you the ability to plug in a docking station or something like that. But most of the Thunderbolt power supplies only go up to 100 watts. So to really get everything you possibly can get out of this laptop, you'll probably want to travel with the power adapter so that it doesn't dial back its performance. You also have gigabit ethernet here built in with a nice little door here for plugging that cable in. You have an HDMI output here. You can get two displays going off of this because this Thunderbolt port, as all Thunderbolt ports are, are full service in that you can have data going in and out along with display output and power going in. So you can plug in a dongle on the Thunderbolt port and plug in HDMI directly here to get two displays going when you are plugged in at a desk. You also have a 10 gigabit USB-A port right here along with a headphone microphone jack there. And on the other side, you have a card reader for SD cards. The card will stick out a little bit, but you can very easily get your photos downloaded off of your camera with this. Again, this is kind of suited for creative folks looking for a lower cost option. You also have a five gigabit per second USB-A port here. So this is the port I would plug mice and keyboards into and plug your hard drives into the other side there. And you have a Kensington lock here for locking it down on the desk. This is a fan exhaust over here. There's also a fan exhaust uh, underneath the display lid and the intake is here at the bottom. So you definitely want to make sure you've got good airflow on this one to ensure that it works at its full potential. And we'll talk a little bit more about its thermal performance a little later in the review. Now the battery life on this 4K version is not spectacular. You're looking at about seven hours if you keep the display brightness down and you stick to the basics like web browsing, email, and video watching and that sort of thing. If you start doing video editing and hammering that GPU, that is going to eat into the battery life a lot more significantly. So you're gonna to wanna to walk around with that power adapter. You can probably squeeze another hour or so out of it if you choose the 1080p display option. So let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll begin with some web browsing, the basics here, and you can see everything is loading up here very quickly as we start browsing around the web as expected. It's got that i7 processor, of course, on board. This does support Wi-Fi 6, and that's what we're connected to right now, but of course you can also plug it in via Ethernet. And a little bit earlier, we played some 4K 60 frames per second video from YouTube, and all was good there. It did drop a couple of frames when it first got started, but it quickly settled down, and this video played back smoothly with no stutters or any other kinds of issues. So I think if you're playing back video from YouTube or Netflix or any of the other popular streaming services, everything should work just fine here, even at 4K. And just note that while this supports HDR video, it does not support Dolby Vision HDR like many laptops with 4K now do. On the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 205. That puts this one a little below what we saw out of a few other laptops with the same processor. And I suspect that that score is due to the fact that this model is configured in single channel mode. Not a huge performance disparity here, but I think you might squeeze a little bit more out of that processor if you add a second stick of RAM to the machine or buy it with two installed already. And we also did some video editing here with DaVinci Resolve. This is a 4K 60 frames per second project that we loaded up here with producer Jake's cat. And as you can see, we are rendering transitions here in real time without any lag or anything like that. Uh, because this does have the NVIDIA GPU on board, this will give you pretty snappy performance when you are uh, doing video editing. I think if you are doing things that involve 3D rendering, you might wanna go with the 3050 option for the GPU, but the 1650 on here is going to be more than adequate for most video editing and certainly most photo editing. So let's move on now to gaming. This is Red Dead Redemption 2. We ran it at 1080p at the lowest settings and we were getting between 60 and 70 frames per second most of the time. So this game ran pretty well provided you keep those settings in check on the 1650 GPU option. We also ran Fortnite at lowest settings at 4K and here we were running between 50 and 60 frames per second most of the time. So you can get a very playable gameplay experience. Some games that are not as demanding I think will run at the 4K resolution, but most games we ran at 1080p. And finally, we have Doom Eternal here. This one we ran at 1080p at medium settings. And as you can see, we're getting above 60 frames per second here most of the time. So the GPU does provide 
a decent amount of performance for playing many current games. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, the 1650 on this laptop performed as expected. We got a score of 3,409. So all in from a performance standpoint, this is exactly where we thought it would end up. Uh, it does do okay at VR as well, but I think if you are planning to do some VR along with some of your creative work, you might want to go with the 3050 Ti in that instance, or perhaps look at a gaming laptop that's better suited for modern VR. On the 3D Mark stress test, we got a failing grade, surprisingly, of 95.8%. 97% is passing. Uh, that tells me that it's going to throttle down slightly uh, when you're playing a game that's going to really hit the CPU and GPU for an extended period of time. Not significantly so, but enough that it showed up on that test. So just be aware of that. The fan noise on this is usually quiet when you are sitting idle at the desktop here or browsing the web. It really kicks on when you start doing things that push that GPU. And you will hear that fan noise, but it's not very high pitched because it is a larger case and it has room for larger fans, but it's certainly not the quietest cooling system I have seen on a laptop. So just be prepared for some fan noise when you are working the laptop a bit with some video editing projects or games. Now, as far as sound is concerned on this one, the speakers are located here on the bottom. They are downward firing. You get good stereo separation. They're nice and clear and loud. Not so great for music though, so I think if you are going to be doing some gaming or listening to music, you might want to attach headphones to the headphone jack or go over Bluetooth. But for the most part, I think for most use cases, the speakers here are quite good. And because you've got this large case here, those speakers will sound a little better than they might on a more compact laptop. All right, one last thing to take a look at, and that is its Linux performance. We booted up the most recent version of Ubuntu and everything ran great on here, really quick actually. In some cases, it felt a little faster than Windows 11. All of the hardware got detected properly. That includes the audio, the video at 4K, along with the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. It also detected the GPU. So I think if you are looking to maybe install Linux on that second hard drive slot, you can do so and you'll get great performance out of this, just like we're seeing on the Windows side. So all in, this is another solid offering from Lenovo in their ThinkBook line. This is really geared towards creative professionals that want a nice, 4K calibrated display without breaking the bank. You get that here. You've got good performance out of this thanks to the GPU being on board, but you don't get a lot of the creature comforts like a magnesium case and something thin and light with great battery life, but you do get that display and you get the performance to get your work done. And if you are on a budget, this might give you what you're looking for without having to buy something fancier and a lot more expensive. And I think that's where this one kind of slots in. And you can save even more if you go with the 1080p display option. That is going to do it for this look at the ThinkBook 15P G2 ITH. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht. Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel. Brian Parker and Frank Goldman. Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya. And Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.